Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement, dynamic behavior of measurement systems. Last time we talked about system first order and step response. Today we are going to talk about the frequency response of a such system first order. What a system first order is was explained in last video. Now today we just want to have a look at this frequency response. Okay, so what is what is a frequency response? Well, you know, you have again an input and an output in the measurement. The input is the physical quantity and the output is the displayed value. And if the physical quantity is changing like a sine wave, yeah, so that it looks like that, I hope I can manage now to draw it, draw this somehow, that it at least looks like a sine wave. Oh yeah, <laughs> should be sine wave. All right. Sine wave. This is the input uh, with a certain frequency. Uh, we have the periodic time. Uh, so here, this is the periodic time. T. Uh, and this T equals 1 divided by the frequency of this. Yeah. And the formula how we may calculate this, yeah. so this xi from t is xi0, so this is the maximum here, this is xi0, the amplitude yeah, multiplied by sinus omega t. And this omega is the circular frequency. Yeah circular frequency and this is 2 pi multiplied by this frequency here the f all right so these are the dependencies and now how does the output look like all right and then now draw it a little bit smaller i try to draw it a little bit smaller Two things might happen, yeah? so that we see it later. All right, so we are we have a delay in the signal, and we do not see the whole signal. So there is a delay. This might the, be the output, okay? So, important to notice is that it has the same frequency and therefore the same periodic time. Yeah? This is exactly the same T as above. Exactly the same T, okay? The only thing which might be different is that we do have here another amplitude uh, so that's xo0 uh, might be smaller uh, and we do have here a delay time and this delay time is usually drawn as delta phi Okay, how much degree are we later? Huh? If this is uh, 360 degree, a full sine wave is 360 degree, how many degree are we later? Okay, why do we give this in degree and not in seconds? Well, you know, if we have a small or a high frequency, the same amount of seconds is much more severe. Uh, let's say we have a periodic time of, I don't know, uh, 0 0.1 seconds and we have a latency of 0 0.01 seconds. So a tenth of the periodic time is the latency. Uh, then this is a tenth. All right, 0 0.01 seconds. Then let's say we have a period time of one second and we have exactly the same delay time of 0 0.01 seconds. Suddenly it's only a hundredth part of the whole swinging time. So it's much, it's, it's less severe simply. 
Yeah? And therefore we need something that we can tell, aha, uh -huh, yeah, how severe is this compared to the swinging time? And here we're using this delay angle, okay? So th minus 360 degree would be delayed for exactly one swing. Minus 180 degree would be delayed exactly for half a swing. And minus 90 degree would be delayed for 90, uh, a fourth part of the swing. And minus 10 degree, I don't know, is that a, a little bit delayed. And here, this looks like around minus 30, I would guess. Okay? If this is a sine wave at all, but let's assume it's a sine wave, then it looks like a, or, then this is 90, yeah, 30, maybe a little bit more than 30. Okay? This would be the delay. Okay? So the delay is given in degree. So here is our XO from T. That's XO0 multiplied by sinus omega t, it's the same omega, it's the same circle of frequency, yeah? and now we have plus this delta phi. Okay, so the, how much this is different. Okay. And if this delta phi is negative, we see it like that, because then we are later. Okay. So here, if delta phi is minus 30 degree, we are like here, okay? Good. How does this look like for... Now that that's the basic. Huh? So this is the test signal and this is the result. The result has exactly the same frequency. The output swings with exactly the same frequency as the input. This is always the case. If I put a frequency on a measurement system, I measure exactly the frequency. However, what might be different is the latency, how much later is the signal, and how, how uh, intense is the output compared to the input. All right? So we do have the, the amplitude ratio. Okay? So the amplitude ratio. This is the output amplitude, XO0, divided by the input amplitude. Okay? If this is 1, yeah, it means the output is exactly the same as the input uh, from amplitude side. Yeah? If it's smaller than 1, the output is less. Alright? And then there is uh, the phase, okay? And I said this is the delta phi, okay? And with these two things, I can draw a diagram. Yeah? If I'm having now a diagram, a two-part diagram, where I say here, okay, this is the circular frequency, omega, yeah? And here I have this amplitude ratio, yeah? So I have here x, O0 divided by Xi0, yeah? then this is 1, this line is 1, okay? And here we have this delta phi, and here is also omega, okay? So it's a two-part diagram. And we have that the, the frequencies are usually displayed in logarithmic scale, so if we have here 1, we have here 10, we have here 100, we have a 1000, we have a 10,000, so always factor 10 in between. So we have a 0 0.1, we have a 0 0.01, 0 0.001, and 0 0.0001. Yeah? So this simply is used to, to display a huge range of different frequencies. And usually they are the same scale. So we also have here 1 and 10 and 100 and 1000, and 10,000, and here we have a tenth, a hundred, a thousand, a ten thousandth part, 
Okay? In the amplitude ratio, we also usually display the, the y values also in, in logarithmic scale. So here we have 1, here we have 0 0.1. This line means only a tenth of the input is coming out. Here we have 0 0.01. Here we have 0 0.001. So here only thousands of the original amplitude is left. Yeah? And here this delta phi is usually scaled normally. So we have here 0 degree, we have a minus 45 degree, we have a minus 90 degree. Uh, this is a typical, typical display. Yeah? And now let's have a look at the system first order. What does it does it look like okay i will write here phase and that's the amplitude ratio and that's the phase okay in the amplitude ratio yeah, it usually at small frequencies we usually display the whole the whole stuff yeah? at high frequencies we are dropping yeah and in a system first order, it is the case that every time the frequency is 10 times more, yeah, the output is dropping to a tenth. Yeah? So 10 times more frequency, only a tenth part of the output is available. Yeah? Every time, from 1000 to 10,000, we're dropping from here to here. Factor 10, factor 10, always factor 10. Yeah? That's a typical sign of a system first order. System second order, what we discuss later, looks different. Yeah? If you see at high frequencies a dropping like this, so every if we double the frequency, we only have half. If we have four times the frequency, we only have a quarter. If we have ten times the frequency, we only have a tenth time. Yeah? If these factors do match, then this is a system first order. All right. And in between, those two things, they simply look like straights. Yeah? Yeah? They look linear. And here we have a certain frequency. Now it happens that this is exactly 10. Okay. And here we have the. So here we have the, the limit frequency. All right. So Grenzfrequenz it's called in German. Okay. Grenzfrequenz is called in German. This is also a typical value. Uh, of a system first order. Okay. The reality is not that sharp. Yeah. In reality, we are looking like that, yeah? that we are here make a transition. Yeah? This is how this looks like. Okay. And here we have a value, yeah? one divided by square root of two. Yeah. This is 0 0.7 or something like this. Yeah. 0 0.7 or something like this. And this is where it ends. Yeah. Where we end up at the, at the limit, at the, at the limit frequency, at the characteristic frequency of a system first order, the Grenzfrequenz. Okay. How does the phase look like? At the beginning, we do not have any mentionable delay. Yeah. And here at the, at the limit frequency, at the characteristic frequency, we do have exactly minus 45 degree yeah, delay. Yeah. And then we have a transition yeah, that we are leaving here, the zero, passing through this at the, at the characteristic frequency. And in the end, we will get close, but never exceed 90 degree. So 90 degree is at very high frequencies its maximum delay is minus 90 degree. Okay. Maximum. Delay minus 90 degree. Good. Huh? This, this thing here, no? this looks like, this looks, this is called a Bode block. All right. And this simply shows if we have this frequency 0 0.01 per second circular frequency omega, yeah, then we have 
exactly the same output and the latency is not very high. If we have this frequency, we only have a hundred output and the latency is already is already uh, minus 90, almost minus 90 degrees, so a, a quarter of a swing. Yeah? Usually, if we have if we have measurement systems and we want to measure a certain frequency, we should stay factor 10 around. Yeah? More, the more the better, yeah? but factor 10 is already okay. Uh, below the, the, the limit frequency, the cutoff frequency, yeah? Grenzfrequenz, cutoff frequency, characteristic frequency, cutoff frequency is the, the, the correct term in English. Yeah? Here we must, should stay factor 10 away. If we have a measurement system like this, where we have here a cutoff frequency of 10, yeah, we could measure up frequency up to 1. Yeah? Then we are a little bit late, yeah, but you know, as long as the swing is have the full extent, we are fine. Okay. So this is this is a characteristic a frequency response of a system first order. Yeah? Here dropping factor factor, yeah? 10, 10, 2, 2, 5, 5, and so on. Yeah? Uh, and here we are maximum delay at minus 90 degrees. Typical signs, those two signs are typical for system first order. We might also end up in a situation where this comes handy to us, you know. Right now we maybe think, ah, but this is, this sucks, you know, because then I cannot measure high frequencies and so on. Sometimes we have the case that uh, we have, for instance, here a signal I want to measure. Yeah? So if this is the signal, color to take brown. Yeah? If this is the signal I want to measure, yeah, let's say this is the, 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 a typical signal and this I want to measure. Okay? This is this is task to measure this. Yeah? And however, due to I don't know yeah, measurement or whatever, yeah, we have quite some noise on it. So actually what it, the signal looks like is like that. Yeah, so that we have here noise, yeah? Sh rauschen, yeah? signal noise. Yeah? If I am now having a measurement system where the signal is somewhere here and the noise is somewhere here, the noise is significantly reduced because the noise is only transferred to a hundred time, yeah? factor 0 to 0, 1, and the original signal is with factor 1. Yeah? So if I have here my cutoff frequency somewhere in the middle, I can significantly reduce the noise of my, of my measurement. Okay? How this looks like, I will show you on the computer. I have an, prepared an Excel sheet where we can overlap a sine wave low frequency and a high frequency sine wave and then we are using a measurement frequent a measurement system where the cutoff frequency is somewhere in the middle yeah? then we will see how this is reacting yeah? I want to show you this yeah? so it's not noise it's another sine wave but let's let's show you so here here is what I was talking about yeah so I made simply a Base sine wave. This is the this is the signal I'm interested in, yeah. And I overlap this with a sine wave with higher frequency. You see, this is this red line. So actually, what I want to measure is this dotted red line. What I measure with a very fast measurement system is the red line. Okay. If I'm not interested in this noise, in this overlapping noise, yeah, I could use a measurement system where the, the cutoff frequency is between this frequency of the base and the, and the frequency of the noise. Yeah? And what I'm getting out of this is then the blue line. You see, the, the base frequency, it is still there. 
Yeah, you, so we are reaching the full extent. Yeah, we are a little bit later. All right. Yeah, because we have this phase shift. Yeah, however, the frequency of the of the uh, signal is still there. Yeah? So we have an amplitude ratio of around one. The amplitude ratio of the higher frequency is not one. You see, it's significantly lower swinging, lower noise on the blue line than on the red line. And this is what I'm talking about. This is a proof or proof. This is how it looks like. You can use a measurement system also for filtering purposes to simply get out the unwanted high frequency areas, the noisy areas, right? Yeah. So this is frequency response of a system first order. When Bode plot, whenever you see a Bode plot, it is a, is a frequency response, right? Good. Yeah. Next time we're going to talk about the impulse function, the weight response or impulse response. How does a system first order react on a short pulse? This will then be in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.